<laughs> Praise the Lord. My question goes this way. You told us that uh, you cannot handle two things at a time. You will only concentrate on one thing. In a situation, let's say, um, I put my question this way. How do we handle depression and the Holy Spirit? Depression and the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And the Holy Spirit. Depression and the Holy Spirit. Depression. Depression. Yes, Okay, okay. Now, what I mean is like this. When I said our mind can only be on one thing, is when we our mind stays on problems, then we keep thinking about a problem. Have you noticed that? Sometimes people cannot fall asleep because they will keep thinking, he yelled at me, he yelled at me, he hurt me. When you keep thinking about a problem, can you go to sleep? No. So what it is, our mind, if we keep thinking about a problem, then we cannot sleep. But we keep thinking, God is helping me, God is helping me. And singing, singing is easier than thinking. The reason is, you try to think, God is loving me. Sometimes it's hard to sing. It takes time to sing. But you can sing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus it is love me. Jesus is, Jesus Christ loves me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ loves me. You keep singing, it will sink into your mind better. So when we concentrate on Jesus, the depression will gradually go away. But we sing a thing of the depression, it's hard to go away. Can you notice? And to get rid of the depression, or to get rid of the depression, it's hard to go away. So we have to sit, think about the positive thing from God and from people. Sometimes people say, encouraging things to us. They say, well, you have been doing a good job. And we say, thank God that people uh, appreciate me. Thank God. But we still concentrate on God more. But we can remember the good things people said to us to encourage us. Okay? Any questions? Please come quickly. Anyone else have questions? Come up quickly. If not, we'll have lunch time. Yes, hello. Sir, I, I want you to marry these two scriptures. Number one, Say so when one is born again, is a new creature. All things have passed away. And the question you put, and the question you put it this morning in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. That question says we have responsibility. I want you to marry the two scripture. The Bible doesn't say that when you are born again, every of your problem goes away. The Bible doesn't say that. That's why the Bible talks about a daily walk with Jesus, live with Jesus, and submit, and daily repent, and <coughs> trust in God, and obey. So all these teachings, you read the Bible, you find that a lot of teaching about obedience, repentance, Turning to God, even David, who loves God so much, he has sinned, and then he will repent. So that's something we need to handle daily. Christian life is not just a one-time battle; it's a long-term battle. So it's, uh, there's no where in the Bible says that that you are new creature, therefore no more problem. The Bible didn't say that. There's still a problem. Okay, this is the last question, but if you see me around, you can still ask me. Praise the Lord. My question concerning relationship with our neighbor, whoever, in a situation whereby you, you are being wrongly accused, being accused or something like that, and then false, false accusation, and as a child of God, you know that they are, they, it wasn't true. But for the fact that you are a child of God, you forget that person and let go of that very issue. Now, the very person involved, being a junior person to you, 
are you ones for being the senior one? But for the fact that you are a child of God, that person refuses to greet you. And um, by the grace of God upon your life, you continue to greet that person. And then the person even, now we study that he's teaching you even to be your child. But you taking it upon, upon yourself as a child of God because you have let go of your offense. And now you are greeting the person and still he refuses to answer your greetings. How do you handle that case? So, so you're saying it's as someone, you know, like a children, right? Not actually a child. Yes, the person is a junior person, a younger person. A younger person. Yes, that even supposed to be, of, uh, you, you can even be his mother or his father. So someone junior to you? Yes, someone. a junior okay. one. And then you take okay. it upon yourself to be greeting the person, and yet, he refuses to answer your greeting. How do you handle it? Okay, so you talk about like someone like your children, or a junior person in a church? A junior person in a church or family or family or neighbor or neighbor workplace. Okay. Now, it depends on whether the person is your children. Now, if your children, I suggest not to use harsh methods. The more harsh methods we use, the more rebellion there is. So we can find out, for instance, if your children always reject us, rebel us, against us, then we want to find out are they like that all the time. They, generally, they're not angry all the time. There are times that they're happier. There, there, there are times that they accept us. So when we can relate to the person in a positive way, gradually there's more trust. For instance, I want to say this. Many parents, when they see the children, it's always saying, you didn't you do your homework, you didn't do this, you didn't do, do that. It's always telling them what they didn't do. And then these children will have built up a rebellion against us. Then we want to correct them by having more love and concern and acceptance and sometimes we ask them, are you happy, unhappy about something? Uh, did I do anything wrong? Even if I have a child, but I don't have a child. Now for my co-workers or, or people I help, when they say something to accuse me, I will ask them, what did I do? Tell me, tell me exactly what I do. So I, I will ask them. So give them a chance to, to say it. And then I don't have to always to correct them. But I will ask them, are you sure that I did it with the wrong motive? So I will try to listen to them, to let them uh, talk with me. Now if it's someone in the church, um, if the person is always impolite, then he's not just impolite to you, he's impolite to other people. Then we want to find out who's there uh, with the family, what's happening with the child, and how can we help. To help generally is not to teach is to guide. So very important to learn the skill of counseling, to lead the person to talk, to find out what his feelings are, what he's unhappy about, to guide them to change. But at the same time, we're not affected by them. That's the point. First key must be not to be affected by them. The second is to how to guide them to, guide them to uh, uh, handle their problem. Okay? So, okay, we'll conclude now with a prayer at this point now let me let me say this this teaching is not easy to apply because we just have the habit of these problems in our life so at this point please stand up please stand up please stand up we just have a short prayer of five minutes okay this morning i'm going to talk about something very important is how to handle different problems in our life. Now on the first day we talk about how to live in the love of God and have the balance of the grace of God and the law of God so that we are motivated by the love of God so that we are free from accusation and burdens and also that we should obey the law because if we sin, if we sin it will bring destruction and uh, if we don't serve God it will also bring destruction. So to the first day we talk about as Christians we should all live in the love of God so that we're not under pressure, that we always enjoy 
the Christian life and show the relationship with God and to be strengthened by the presence of God, strengthened by His love and peace and joy. And, and then we should obey God and serve God. Now, I want to say this, the main purpose of all my training is to raise up people to serve God. To raise up people to serve God. And yesterday we talked about the Holy Spirit. How we can be filled with the Holy Spirit and then how we can, we ourselves experience the peace and love and joy and healing of the Lord. And then we can pray for people to bring them to experience the Holy Spirit and bring them to Jesus Christ. And also how to raise up people to serve God. Now I know on one day it's hard to learn everything, but you can ask questions. And today I talk about something very important because when we're motivated by the love of God and we know that we should obey God and serve God, but very often people have bad habits. People are affected by the people around us. We are affected by the, uh, the people who yell at us, who hurt us. We also are also affected by negative thinking and negative emotions. For instance, I use a simple illustration. Many, many Christians in the family, because the husband or wife are not treating them well, or they themselves are not treating their husband or wife well. And so there is yelling and anger and frustration. And this way, then we cannot have the joy of the Lord and cannot have the freedom of the Lord. And how do we handle that? Also, most people have, you know, are controlled by some kind of sin. It could, you know, it, uh, it might not be something very, very serious, but it can be some anger or some forgive, unforgiveness in the heart or some uh, bad relationship with people. Now, it might not seem very serious, but it still can destroy the life. And also, the relationship with people would have Problem. All these areas will affect us being used by God. So in order to be used by God, we have to clear all this garbage from our life. And some people say it's too difficult. And today I'm going to tell you some practical and simple ways to take care of all these problems if you are willing. If you pay attention. So this is very, very important teaching. And this teaching came from my many years of being uh, persecuted by people or people say negative things to me or yell at me and I learned how to handle it and God guide, guided me all these years to learn how not to be affected by people and how to, how to uh, be free of any kind of burdens and to live in joy. And so you need to pay attention and really learn this well. And I hope, hope uh, this will stay in your mind. All these teachings should be applied throughout our life. It's not just for this week. It's throughout our life. And also it's something we should teach our people throughout the Christian life to help them handle different problems. Okay, now let me say this. Today I will talk about how to handle negative people, how not to be affected by them, and negative thinking, negative e emotions and sins, so, and negative behavior, all this is a big thing, it's a big thing, but I try to condense it all into one day. And, pardon me? The burden, yeah, I will talk about burden too, yeah, and every, everything. But, I first, I will say this. The, scientists have helped us. Now, I'm not using the method of the scientists, but the scientists has, have helped us to understand our brain. And actually, it's the, God, it's the brain that God created. They just help us to understand the brain that God has created. And I'm going to explain how the brain works. And then together with all this principle in the Bible. Now, it's supported by the Bible. Now, what what have scientists found out is like this. Our brain has hundreds of millions of nerve cells. And each nerve cell can have trillions. This is a large number. 
trillions of connections. It's how many connections? Each nerve cell can have one with 15 zeros behind that. That's many connections. There are many nerve cells in our brain. All this actually is, it didn't come from a scientist, it came from God. And all these nerve cells have different connections, different connections. And from our childhood, when we learn to walk, it's not a simple thing. You know, to be able to walk, it has to make trillions and trillions of connections that all these nerve cells know how to balance the body in order to be able to walk. And our brain has recorded all these habits. So we have many habits like how to cook, how to talk, even how to talk, how to control the tongue. Little children cannot talk. You know, when they were babies, they cannot talk. And they cannot concentrate their eyes. All this came from a lot of learning. The problem is, we have learned many good things, but at the same time, we have learned many bad behavior. For instance, when someone yells at us, immediately we have the connection for most people. Immediately, they would react like this. He's yelling at me. He doesn't like me. He is bad. And nobody likes me. So I am nobody. And I'm not important. And I'm unhappy. And some people will say, I want to die. I have no use. I'd like to ask you to examine yourself. Have you found that when someone yells at you, when someone says negative words to you, immediately we have reaction from our hearts, from our feelings, and behavior that are natural, that we don't want to look at a person, we get angry, we get frustrated, and our blood pressure go high, and for the whole day we might be unhappy, and for many days after that, or many months, for some people for many years, we keep thinking about those things. Let me ask you, have you noticed these bad habits in your life? That for instance, when you look at, for most people when they look at a husband or wife, they would have a mixture of different feelings. They would say, my husband or wife doesn't listen to me, He's not nice to me, he doesn't like me, and I don't like him. Now, even though you live together, but many people find faults with their spouse, and with their children, and with the church members, and with the pastors. There are ways we accept the pastor, but there are ways we don't accept him. When certain behavior comes up, immediately we have all these negative feelings coming up. Have you noticed this? Okay, now the first thing is to be aware of this. And then, another thing is, the good news about this, is that our brain is capable of learning new things. But it's not easy to learn new things. For instance, you want to use chopsticks. Have you heard about chopsticks in Chinese use? How many of you have heard of chopsticks? Not too many. Huh? The two sticks we use. And then we can pick food very easily. You look at the Chinese, it's so easy. But for you to learn it, it's so difficult. Or for you to learn Chinese. For instance, I say, Lei Hong Ma, Lei Hong Ma. You try to say it. Can, can you try to say, Lei Hong Ma? Can you say it? <laughs> now, you, you're similar. <laughs> similar, but it's not the same. Lei Ho Ma. It's not the same. Now, the point is, if you learn Chinese, in Chinese, we will be able to tell that you're not a Chinese. <laughs> I mean, you can learn as close as you can, but he can tell you're not a Chinese. And when I want to learn the African language, and you will tell I'm not an African. So it takes a lot of this uh, nerve connection or for us to learn new things. We can learn, but the point is, 
we don't want to learn new way of thinking. We don't want to learn new way of thinking. The reason is, we use an illustration, okay? This represents your spouse. When we look at our spouse, there are a lot of memories that come up. Is that true? A lot of memories. Yes. How your spouse has hurt you, how your spouse speak negatively, and all these memories would come up. So we say, I don't want to change. That's the reason. We don't want to change. We don't want to change. The bad habits, we don't want to change. For instance, we teach people, God, you know, the teaching that God is in control of everything. And when we love God, we obey God, God will bless us. And when we serve Him, He will reward us. And then if we don't love Him, we don't obey Him, then there will be a bad, a destruction. And when we don't serve God, there's also destruction. All this teaching we teach people, but people don't necessarily follow. Why? Because they don't want to change. It's not easy for people to change. They can change if they want to, but they might not want to change. Let me ask you, how many of you spent at least half an hour last night after you come home, go home, and you try to pray the way I taught you, to keep the strong presence of the Holy Spirit? Now, you have to tell the truth. Don't tell a lie now. <laughs> how many of you went home at least spent half an hour to practice how to love God and to use the prayer of grace, the prayer of worship, and the prayer, the interactive prayer. How many of you did that last night? Can you raise your hand? Okay, I saw one hand. Now, okay, two hands. Now the point is, it might be hard for you to learn a new way of praying. It might be hard. And or you might say, I don't want to use this new way. I, I have my own way. Now I'm not saying my way is the only way. The point is, has it worked for you? Has it built up anointing for you? When you pray for people, have people experienced the Holy Spirit? Now if you find that you need to learn, then you have to tell yourself, I need to learn. The point is, it's hard to change old habits. Now, yesterday, uh, the first day I also talked about how to talk to your husband and wife, right? Use words of grace, remember? And also when we use words of uh, the law, use it gently. Instead of saying, why don't you, why didn't you clear the garbage? Instead we can say, thank you for clearing the garbage. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for being so nice to us. <laughs> so let me ask you, have you changed the way you talk to your family members? Any one of you, you go home and you change the way you talk to your family members and you start to appreciate what they do. How many of you did that? Okay, raise your hand. Okay, very good. I see three hands. Now, the point is, we need to change. It's a new habit. So, it's hard to change because first, we might forget it. Second, we're so used to the way, the old way of relating to them. So it's very hard to learn, to change. Now the Bible does talk about that. The Bible does talk about it's hard to change habits. Jeremiah 13, 23. Jeremiah 13, 23. There it says that. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopards his spots? Then may you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. Now what is verse is, can an Ethiopian change his skin color? Can I change my skin color? Can I change my skin color? I cannot. And can a leopard change his spots on the body? They cannot. And then, God said, if they can change, then those people who are used to sinning can change. So what God is saying is, it's very hard to change. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's, you need to have the motivation and you need to understand how you behave. You need to understand how you behave. And you need to understand how to change. And you're willing to follow through with change every day follow through with the change every day, and then you can change with time. 
Now, what the scientist has told us, it just confirmed the fact in the Bible. Habits are hard to change. Habits are hard to change. For instance, for many people, when you step into a place, you might have the habit of using your left foot first. When you step, step. You may have a habit, like walking up steps, steps. You might have a habit of using the left foot first or the right foot first. Or when you wash your face or brush your teeth, you have a certain way to do it. You may notice your, your spouse may uh, do a different way. So we all have different ways of behaving. And so some people, have you noticed some people, they always get angry easily. Have you noticed some people? They get frustrated. They get mad or they get sad, depressed easily. Those are bad habits. And we know that those habits will continue if it doesn't do anything to change. They will continue if they don't do anything to change. So the scientists just discover something the Bible has said. But the point is, God has created our brain so that God has created a brain. We can have learn new ways. We can learn new ways. Even though it's difficult, it's still, we can still learn to have new ways. And we can, have, we can learn new ways not to be affected by sinners. But these new ways take at least 60 days if we do it every day. If we do this prayer from the Spirit, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You do it 60 days you have a chance to keep the habit. If you just do it one day and then I leave, you'll forget about, forget about it. The next time I come back, if I do come back and ask you, okay, when you pray for people, do you see people experience the Holy Spirit? You might say, it's still the same way. We have to build up a habit of 60 days at least and continue to do it. If you do 60 days and stop, then you will lose it too. We need to keep doing it. So every habit needs a conscious learning, conscious effort. And I'm going to go into each of this, uh, what we need to change, how we are not affected by people, the sinful uh, negative thinking and negative feelings and sins and all this, how to change. But first we need to be aware, it's hard to change. It's hard to learn a new way. We need to be consciously doing it re, re, uh, repeatedly in order to learn it. Okay, you got this first point? It's hard to change. That's why it's hard for you to go home and change. Now, um, Pastor Gosson, he, um, he learned my teaching, and he said that he changed his behavior with his wife. I'm gonna ask him, give him a mic there, because he has to watch that that cell phone. Uh, we have a second mic. So, can you say how was it easy for you to change immediately? And have you noticed the process of changing? Was it, was it easy? Was it difficult? Have you been aware of how far you've changed? And also, are there resistance to change. Okay. If not, you use my mic. Now, but make sure that is they keep recording. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, girls, as the teaching is saying, change is not easy, but it is possible. After learning Pastor Yes' teaching, especially with regard to families. I saw myself directly opposite the what God expected of me. So now I decided to change purposely and consciously. But many a times it appears as though you are joking. Because something that you are very used to, that you have getting adapted to it and suddenly you now try to say something different, the person might not even take you serious. So sometimes I hardly told my wife, I love you. Every time I'm over busy. So now when I learn this teaching, it's like when I tell her I love you, honey, 
she can look at me as if <laughs> when they started <laughs> in Jesus name and the person can look so amazed and surprised hallelujah so and even with argument one thing I learned from this other teaching is do not eat garbage meaning do not allow somebody negative thoughts or behavior to affect you so I always saw other people's behavior as if they don't know better. As a result, I should not follow them by getting angry. So that helped me a lot, and even my church. You notice that no one in my church go at longer heads. Everybody know that another man garbage is not for them. They will never eat somebody's garbage. Meaning they always saw people as if, if you misbehave to them, they feel that you don't know better. So they will not follow you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you, in your members, you observe how many people really change the way they talk to the family members? That how many people did not change and how many people change? In Jesus' name. Yeah. On the average, almost half of my church members, because many of them went for the conference. When I went for the first day, I discovered that this conference meant life. So I encouraged almost all my members to attend. And they called it from the horse's own mouth. And from right there, we started to adapt a new thing, a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things, and a new way of responding to people that have negative feelings. So, so because I have a member of almost 150, but close to 100 have actually changed. And the 50, 150 members in my church, 100 have, ex have exercised these teachings and they have changed. Yeah, they have to be at 100. Okay. And they have adapted to a new way of doing things. Okay. And the other 50 on and off are struggling to also okay. follow the others. Okay, okay, but well, that's a very good figure. And uh, so what, what I'm saying is, we, it has to be conscious effort. And also for the pastor to keep reminding them and keep having different teachings about how to handle anger, how to handle depression, how to handle, you know, how to talk to people. All of this has to be relearned. So uh, right now I'm gonna talk about how not to be affected by negative people. Okay, one Bible verse we want to write down is Psalm 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. There it says, The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? Psalm 118, verse 6. So, the Lord is with me. The Lord helps me. I will not be afraid. And what can people do to me? So what this verse is saying is, God is helping me, God is with me. I don't need to be afraid of people. And what can people do to me if they yell at me? When they yell at me, it doesn't mean I will lose my things. It doesn't mean I will lose my blessings because people cannot take away the blessings of God. Now many people think when the people yell at them or try to attack them, they will be able to rob from them. But you know, when Jesus was tried by Pontius Pilate, and Pontius Pilate asked him, why didn't you answer my questions? Do you know that I have the authority to crucify you or to set you free? And Jesus answered him, if not with the authority from above, you can do nothing to me. So Jesus believed that it's not his physical authority. It's authority from heaven. When God doesn't allow something to happen, people cannot hurt us. But you, say, you might say, people do hurt me. The point is, do you take it? When people yell at you, they say, you're a fool. Most people would take it and say, I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool. You are a fool. That is taking what he said. That's taking the garbage, eating the garbage. What he said, we take it, to be, take it seriously. But if we say, he has no authority over my wisdom, 
God loves me, God helps me. If I follow God, I will have wisdom that I'm not a fool. When he said, you fool, I will not become a fool. <laughs> so that way, we believe no one can take away the blessings from us. Now, let me ask you, do you believe that? Yes. No one can take away the blessings from us? Yes. yes. But in reality, are we affected by people? Yes. Because, yeah, because they keep yelling and the voice is so irritating and keep talking, keep talking, and then we get angry. And then not just for the moment, we get angry at night when we sleep, we get angry the next day, and we get angry with the person from then on. Has that happened to you? Yes. Now, if we get angry with the person all the time, does it hurt us? Yes. In person, because anger will destroy our spiritual life. We won't have the joy. How can you be free? Ha, 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 To be joyful. Now, why do most ministers and people who serve God have pressure? Because people say to them, sometimes they don't say it. It's the expression on the face. When they preach, they mean these people close their eyes. They don't listen. Or when the pastor says something to them, they show an expression of being unhappy, impatient. No patience to listen. Then this pastor will get an impression, people don't like my ministry, one way or another. And then we, in the inside, the feeling is, it's hard to change these people. It's hard to help these people. So gradually, many pastors will have some kind of burden and pressure in their hearts. That when some pastors, they have a son, a, a, what do you call it? A, a fear of, for Sunday. A fear for Sunday. Because Sunday, they have to do something, and the people may not like it. Some, for some pastors, they have a fear for Sunday. Or they have a fear to try to confront some people to change them. They, because they think it's very hard. Then they are affected by the people. Now for me, I've seen people, they were unwilling to change all the time. And I've handled difficult people. I have even handled difficult pastors. Now, I try to be as soft as possible. I try to be as gentle as possible, not to get angry. But I've found some pastors, they really, they are very controlling. And they look at money only. I have seen this in my mission work. But if I'm affected by them, then I say, I don't want to go anymore. I don't want to do anymore. But I will say, it doesn't matter. There must be people who want to learn. There must be people who want to change. Yes. Now, there are people who are reluctant to change. Maybe they change a little bit. But it's their responsibility. I don't have to carry the burden. I can come to speak in a very easy, relaxed way, and yet with confidence in God, with the presence of God, with the anointing of God. If I have anger, I would not carry the anointing of Jesus Christ. Then I would be under pressure. And if I live like this, then I have no pastors who admit that they have depression. I have no pastor that they admit that they have depression, that they have pressure in the heart. Now, some of you might have this feeling. You don't know why. In the heart, there's some kind of pressure there. Now, some of you might have this feeling. When no one is yelling at you, you just feel pressure here. If you feel pressure here, that means you are under some kind of burdens, some kind of depression is affecting you. And that way, it's hard for you to enjoy life. And then, some Christians and pastors will say, please come back, Lord Jesus, come back soon. So I don't have to work so long, it's too hard, too hard. Then they have a fear for ministry and they cannot enjoy life. Now, but you say, but my spouse and the people around me are not easy to relate to. They're not easy to relate to. How can I change the situation? The first thing is we change ourselves. We change ourselves every day in order to have strength first. 
we need to have strength from the Lord. Every day we praise the Lord, love the Lord. The Lord is loving me. Hallelujah. The Lord is loving me. The Lord is blessing me. And when I pray to Him, He's very happy. That way we build up the confidence in Jesus Christ. Not to build up pride, but to build up confidence in Jesus Christ. And build up the strong presence of God that all the time we feel peaceful and joyful and free. The first thing. The second thing is, to have confidence, people cannot take away our blessings. When they yell at us, they cannot do anything. When they yell at us, we can just take it to be wind. Wind. Do you take the wind seriously? You don't take it seriously. Or a crazy person on the street. Have you seen a crazy person yelling at people on the street? Have you ever seen crazy people? If they yell at you, do, do you take it seriously? No. no. No, because you know he's crazy, right? Yes. You won't take it seriously. But at home, you say, my spouse is not crazy. And that's why I take it seriously. But what I want to say is, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Therefore, even we ourselves will sin sometimes. And we sometimes offend our spouse and the people around us. We sometimes talk in impolite ways, that in negative ways that hurt people. So other people can do the same thing. So when we realize it came from a sinful nature, sin came from sinful nature and came from Satan, do we have to take it seriously? No. no. But our hearts doesn't want to take it, doesn't want to forget it. Our hearts are feeling. Do you find it? Our mind say, I don't, you know, after you learn this, you say, your mind will say, I don't want to take it seriously. But our heart refuses to reject the garbage. Because we say, it's not fair. In our heart, we have this feeling, it's not fair, it's not fair. But this feeling of being not fair will hurt us. We'll be hurt when we take garbage when we take negative words seriously and we can say well it doesn't matter when he says I'm a fool I won't become a fool but let me tell you our mind can handle it but our feeling still takes time I have learned this because all this teaching I have lived it up lived it out myself I found that when my mind can say I don't have to take it seriously but when I go to sleep I find that my heart is still heavy so what do I do? I keep saying, God is loving me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. When I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things will be given to me, and God will use me and bless me, and I don't have to take people seriously, and I praise God, hallelujah, ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I keep praising the Lord. I keep, I notice that. Let me tell you another secret. Our mind can only concentrate on one thing at a time. Write this down. Right. Our mind can only concentrate on one thing at a time. You have to write this down. Write this down. Most people concentrate on the negative words of people. When someone says, speak negatively to them, they will concentrate on the negative words of people. Have you noticed that? If someone speaks negatively to you, we keep thinking about it for the whole day, and the next day, and the next week, and the next month, and it keeps coming up. Now, we want to change a habit. We want to concentrate on Jesus Christ's love, His acceptance. He say, take heart, relax, my son and my daughter, relax. Your faith has healed you. So you have to think of the Bible words I told you yesterday, that Jesus, the the, actually the first day that Jesus said take heart, relax, don't worry son and daughter your faith has healed you so we keep remembering that Jesus is saying, he's opening his arms to me and say don't worry don't have the burden I'm blessing you, I'm helping you I'm happy when you follow me when you follow me, I'm happy with you and I'll bless you so if our heart concentrate on that, we will gradually forget about the negative words of people. And I find that some methods are useful. You can write this down. Humming praise song is helpful. When you keep thinking about those things, you just hum a, a praise song. 
you talk like something like this. Or you can say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus loves me all the time. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me all the time. Now, when you say, do you notice that your mind is on this song only? Now, try it once again. You, you, you seem to forget about the other things. Because your mind can only do one thing at a time. Now, try again. Jesus loves me. <laughs> Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me all the time. Jesus 